When you have type 1 diabetes, you basically get a new job. So congratulations, you are now a pancreas. Because your body isn't built to live without insulin, you have to consistently give yourself doses. But it's not as simple as doing the same thing every day without thinking, like sleepily brushing your teeth. There are actually a couple kinds of insulin and ways to take it. Plus, your daily needs can change depending on what you're doing, how you're eating, and your unique body. This is where having diabetes gets a little mathy. Your goal is to gently steer your blood glucose levels to avoid dangerous spikes or crashes so your cells aren't stressed out by too little or too much sugar floating around. For most people, the target range is 4 to 10 millimoles of glucose per liter of blood. As they say, whole body's perfect. So it's great if you can stay in that zone around 70% of the time. Now, most people don't think of themselves as bags of 4 and a half to 5 and a half liters of blood, but you probably know how tall you are or how much you weigh. So you can use that information to calculate how much insulin you might need in a day to steer your body towards the target blood glucose range. On average, adults with type 1 diabetes take 0.6 units of insulin per kilogram of body weight per day. While nobody's exactly average, this is a good place to start. You might need less than average if you're relatively small or thin, if you don't eat too much foods with carbohydrates, or if you're burning energy quickly, like if you're exercising a lot. Or you might need more than average if the opposite is true, if you're relatively big, if you eat lots of foods with carbohydrates, or if your blood doesn't pump as efficiently for whatever reason. You might also want to check where you're injecting insulin. Because if you reuse one of your favorite spots over and over again, the insulin might not absorb as well there. If you're just learning how to manage type 1 diabetes or you're really struggling to stay in that target range, that's okay. It's not easy to be a pancreas. You can try starting from that calculation of how much daily insulin you might need and adjust it from there. But like I said before, there isn't just one kind of insulin. There's two. Basal insulin and bolus insulin. Basal insulin is also known as long-acting insulin. You always need some insulin in your body, and basal insulin helps you steer your blood glucose levels throughout the day and night. Without any basal insulin, your glucose levels may skyrocket. It's kind of like keeping gentle steady pressure on the brake when you're driving downhill, so you don't speed out of control. Some people rely on basal insulin almost completely, even through meal times, but this isn't the safest strategy. You might get in trouble with low blood sugar in the middle of the night if you miss a meal or exercise a bunch during the day. It's healthier if about half of your daily insulin is basal. The other half of this dynamic duo is bolus insulin, also known as short-acting insulin. A working pancreas will squirt out some insulin with every snack or meal. So, now that you're a substitute pancreas, you should too. Making this a habit is a game changer. When you're eating, bolus insulin helps your body move glucose into the cells for energy or storage instead of leaving it to float around in your bloodstream. After taking your basal dose, the remaining half of your daily insulin should ideally be bolus. To get mathy again, it's helpful if your total basal dose is about the sum of all of your bolus doses across the day. These basic ratios will take you far in your type 1 journey. If they seem way off from what you've been doing, make sure to chat with your diabetes care team and make adjustments gradually to learn how your body responds. And in the next two videos, we'll talk about how to fine-tune your basal and bolus doses even more. Here are the three key takeaways from this episode. Number one, the average adult with type 1 diabetes needs 0.6 units of insulin per kilogram of body weight per day, though needs will vary from person to person. Number two, around half of your daily insulin should be long-acting basal insulin, and the other half should be made up of short-acting bolus insulin with meals and snacks. And finally, three, making a habit of taking some bolus insulin every time you eat is a game changer unless you're treating a low or about to exercise. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this episode helpful.